Greetings pet lovers, Bridget here with First Street Pets and today we're going to talk about eco-friendly pet care. We live in a wasteful world and we all know it. Our grandparents used and reused many things, sent the milk bottles back to the factory to be refilled, folded up tinfoil and used it again for another day, sewed their own clothes. Unfortunately, those days are gone with corporations pumping out tons and tons and tons of stuff for us to buy, clothes, games, cheap plastic implements for around the house. Everything is disposable. Even phones, even things that are expensive are still disposable and we're expected to only use them for a short time. This obviously creates a huge amount of garbage and leaches toxins into the ground. Just watch any Netflix documentary. You'll be educated, although depressed, but you can learn all about production of clothing, plastics, and all sorts of things that are way overproduced and polluting our earth. Even the recycling process can be damaging to the ecosystem. With the days of filling up the milk bottles long gone, anything that we turn in now, like soda cans and bottles, have to be reprocessed. So there's that whole processing thing over again. Unfortunately, pet products are not immune to this. There are many things that are made for our pets today, our pampered pets, that are disposable and wasteful. But we should also do our part to reduce, reuse, and recycle as much as possible. And while we're at it, you can also save money. My number one recommendation for being an eco-friendly pet owner is to buy things that are quality. Now, I don't like shopping. I'm not a shopper. I hate going to stores. With online shopping now, it makes it a million times easier, but I still don't like to buy stuff unless I really need it. I don't just go on and look to, to buy things just for fun. So when I buy something, especially if it costs a good amount of money, I want it to last a long time. A good quality leather leash should last for years. A good quality collar for a dog should last at least a year unless it gets damaged or completely shredded. I like to buy things that will last. And this contributes to less waste. Another step you can take after buying things that are quality, that are meant to last, things that are not going to last like food and treats, you can buy them in bulk. Now, as I mentioned, plastic is one of the primary polluters of our planet, and most things come in plastic bags. Now, there's a reason for that. When plastic first came out, it was revolutionary because it kept things clean and sanitary. When you buy meats and fresh foods at the store, they're wrapped in plastic because it keeps the bacteria at bay. <laughs> but of course, then it leads to the inevitable problem with the garbage. So if you can buy some products in bulk and store them in storage bins, and they have the airtight kind with the spinning tops that works really well. I've had a couple that I've had for probably 10 years that still work very well. Now, this is going to depend, of course, on what type of pets you have. If you have a five pound chihuahua who eats a quarter cup of food a day, you're not going to be buying the 50 pound sack of food. But if you have multiple dogs, multiple cats, larger dogs, it's not only eco-friendly, but it's going to save you money buying those larger bags and then storing them rather than buying a bunch of small bags. So you're using less waste. A friend of mine also brought it to my attention that some people reuse feed bags and that there can be many uses for them. She has a friend who makes them into shopping bags and other kinds of products. The person who takes care of my horses takes all those old feed bags, slits them down the middle, and uses them to portion out the hay. And so a lot of it doesn't spill on the ground when you're walking from one area to another. So there are ways you can also reuse those plastic bags. I use them at home for cleaning the cat boxes because why would I want to throw away a big empty bag when I can use it to clean the cat boxes and put some food garbage and yucky stuff in there and then tie it up and put it in the garbage bin outside. 
Another way to avoid using excessive plastic bags is to make your own food. Now, opinions vary widely on this, and I just finished an article on the history of pet food, which you may find interesting. I'll link it in the description. But there's a variety of different diets out there. I'll put some links in the description that people can give to either their dogs or cats. Now, if you're making your own food at home, you're probably keeping it fresh or freezing it and storing it in Tupperware type plastic containers. So you cannot reuse these containers, wash them and use them again for the same purpose. So this is going to save you a lot of garbage and it may also be more healthful for your pets. So again, check out the links in the description and I would love to hear your opinions if you feed your pets a fresh diet, which one you like to use. Waste management is another thing that we as pet owners need to be conscious of. Now, according to a study done at UCLA, pets produce more than 5 million tons of waste yearly, and that's just in the United States. That is a lot of poop. Now, since we're bagging a lot of this stuff up in plastic bags, that's going to the landfill with all the other garbage. So there's a few things you can do. One of the most obvious is flushing poop down the toilet. Now this can be a good solution if you have, say the five pound chihuahua where you just pick up the little tiny turds with a piece of toilet paper and flush them down the toilet. If you have a Great Dane, maybe not so much. Care must be taken when flushing anything down the toilet because systems can be delicate and there's nothing like having the plumber come out to your house and pull all that stuff out of the pipes and show it to you. Ask me how I know. Those flushable wipes are not really flushable, especially when you're on a septic system. So flushing may be an option, but it does have a lot of caveats. A problem with flushing cat poop is you can't get any litter in there. And I'm sorry, even those litters that say they're flushable, I wouldn't put that down my toilet even though I'm on a city sewer system. So that may be an option for some, but it can lead to a lot of problems with your plumbing. Now, another good option and simple is to buy biodegradable bags. So the good thing about plastic bags is it keeps your hands clean. It keeps the pathogens from the poop off of your hands. But some people use newspapers or plastic bags as a more eco-friendly solution, but then again, you could get it on your hands and there's a risk of disease transmission. So the biodegradable plastic bags look the same as any other plastic bag, but when thrown in the garbage, they will decompose at a much faster rate than regular plastic. Now these can be used for picking up in the backyard or put them in your pocket when you go on a dog walk. Some people also use them for scooping the cat box. So they'll just have a roll of them next to the cat box. And when you clean it each day, throw that out with the garbage. So that's, that's a pretty easy solution that does at least reduce the amount of plastic in the landfill. I did see some articles on pet poop being composted, but I'm not personally going to recommend it because it seems very risky. I did find some information on composting dog poop. Apparently it's possible, but complicated because dog feces can have parasites and a lot of pathogens that are harmful to people and other animals. I didn't see anything about composting cat poop, so I'm guessing that's just a big no. So another similar option is to set up one of those septic systems like doggy pot for just for the dog poop. And apparently there's uh, things online where you can make your own or you can buy one on Amazon. And I'll put some links to that if it's something you're interested in looking into. And this can be good if you just want to pick up the poop in your yard with a pooper scooper, throw it in there. There's kind of a process and the poop is supposed to break down and leach harmlessly into the soil. So I haven't tried that myself. If you had, I'd love to hear about it in the comments because it sounds like a good solution, but I don't know how well those actually work. And you definitely don't want to put them in people septic tanks because those are very touchy. Eco-friendly toys. So what's more fun than playing with your pets? You walk into any boutique store and there's just an array of stuff that you can buy. All kinds of plush toys in funny shapes, frogs, chickens, mailmen, <laughs> Mr. Bill, anything you can imagine, rings, balls, ropes, all sorts of stuff, all with a price tag to match. The problem is half this stuff doesn't last a day, even the ones that can cost 15 or $20. I brought home some of these cute things and they were torn to bits within 24 hours. So not only is it a waste of money, now you're just dumping a bunch more stuff 
in the garbage. So there are some ways that you can get more eco-friendly toys. One is to make them yourself. Everyone with a cat knows that they love boxes. And <laughs> anytime you order stuff online, which we're all doing a lot more of right now, it comes with a box. So that's a free toy for your kitty. I like to keep a stash of these in the garage when one gets too shredded or peed on. That one goes to the bin and then they get a new one. If you have a really big box, you can also cut off one side of it, put it down flat. My kitties love to stand on that and then scratch, stretch and scratch their claws and roll around on it. You can also sprinkle a little catnip on it to make it a little more fun. Paper sacks are also a good choice. They like to go in them, on them, shred them, whatever. Now, if you're ego conscious, you're probably going to the grocery store with your own bags, but I have a tendency to forget, and right now we can't use them anyway because of the situation. So bring home a few of those paper sacks and your kitties will thank you. Just be sure to tear off the handle so they don't get their head stuck in there. I have seen this happen and it can have a really bad result. So be sure to tear the little handles off before you give them to your kitties. There are also some toys that are much tougher than others. One of those are Tuffy brand toys. I've had some of those for years and I would highly recommend them. They come in different shapes and just the material they're made out of and the way they're stitched, no matter what the dogs do to them, they can shake them, bite them, throw them. They don't come apart. That's my kind of toy, <laughs> one that I can buy and still have five years later. Ropes, now these you can make yourself. If you go to any hardware store and talk to the associate there, they can find you a type of rope that's a size and grade appropriate for your dog. Now obviously any rope or any toy really should be supervised, especially at first, because you don't want them shredding it and swallowing the bits. But the ropes you can buy at the hardware store by the foot, it's literally pennies a foot, sometimes 20 cents, 30 cents a foot. And the associate can cut the rope, not the ends, burn the ends so they don't fray, set it up for you really nice. They'll have different kinds of marine rope and things for the garden, and they can just help you choose one that's safe for your dog to play with. And you can have one made for a couple dollars that will hopefully last you a long time. Don't forget about Kongs. They do come in different strengths. The red ones, I think, are the standard. That's what I have, and the black ones are for the super chewers. There's a million websites out there with Kong recipes. There's, of course, the old favorite peanut butter, making sure it doesn't contain xylitol, the artificial sweetener. So just regular natural peanut butter, no diet, no locale, anything like that. Be sure to check the ingredients or the Kong stuffing that you can buy in the can, it's a little pricey, or anything else you wanna put in there. Some people will freeze them, they'll mix up a whole concoction and freeze it, let their dogs lick it during the day, it's a good treat during the summer. So the Kong is another good choice of a toy that you get your money's worth, and it's good for the dog, it'll last for a long time. It will not be in the garbage can for many years. If you have pets, you're going to be doing a lot of cleaning. I know, I do, and I never seem to be able to keep up with it. So there are so many cleaning products out there. It's just ridiculous. Even my hardware store has like two aisles full of all these jars and sprays and cans of things that are not only full of chemicals, but they're pricey. It can be seven or eight dollars for a little spray bottle of something to clean the countertops. Now you can clean just about anything in your house with vinegar and water. And tough stains, you can use baking soda. There's a million websites about this already, so uh, rather than going into detail, I'll just link it. These are also really popular with frugal websites and blogs. They like to talk about ways that you can clean your house with a couple of products that cost a couple dollars. I like the vinegar smell when you dilute it properly for cleaning. It's not like it stinks like vinegar. It's not like you're eating sweet and sour soup but it just has this kind of light, fresh, clean smell that, that isn't a perfumey artificial roses or coconut smell like some of those things have. So these are some easy cleaning products. If you really need suds, a couple drops of dish soap will clean anything. It'll even clean your windows. I looked up on YouTube how to clean my exterior windows and what do the pros use dish soap. So I understand Castile soap is very popular among the eco-conscious. I haven't tried it myself. So I just use what I have at home, which is Dawn. 
So by making your own cleaning products, you're not only reducing your use of chemicals, you're saving money, but you're also reducing plastic by not throwing away all those little bottles that have a relatively small amount in them. You can just buy those plastic bottles at any store, a dollar store, hardware store for like a dollar fifty. Mark them with what product is in the bottle, fill them up, and just rinse them and reuse them again when they become empty. And then Reese. Grace wants to say hi. Say hi, Grace. She'd been rubbing around my legs the whole time. She decided to make an appearance. Okay, I'll go back. Parasite control is a very important aspect of pet care. Now, I don't like chemicals, but I'm not going to be one of those natural pet owners that says never, never use chemicals, only use natural things. I think there is a time and a place for chemicals, but I think it's best to consult with your veterinarian. Now, some animals have a heavy parasite load, whether it's fleas or ticks or internal parasites, it can literally kill them. One of my cats, Elf, when I got her as a kitten, she had so many fleas that she was dying. She was cold as an ice cube, pale, anemic, and I literally removed hundreds of fleas from her, probably a thousand fleas from a kitten that weighed like a pound. So they can seriously get compromised by these things. The internal parasites are more insidious because you don't see them. They'll just do poorly. They won't gain weight. They won't be healthy and it can eventually kill them and significantly decrease their quality of life. So anytime you get a new pet or you suspect your pet has a bad infestation of parasites, consult with your veterinarian. They can dose out the heavy duty treatment, solve the problem, and then you can take steps to prevent it in future with a more natural approach. But you gotta get rid of the problem in the first place. Now, another reason I say consult with your veterinarian was my cats are indoors. I haven't had to use flea products for years, but last summer I rescued two kittens and brought fleas back into the house. Thank you very much. So I started having a problem and I needed to knock it out. So I ordered a name brand product. I won't name it because I bought it before with no problems but I bought it online to save money. It was the name brand product. I thought I was buying it from the manufacturer, but all my cats got burned on their skin by this topical product. And I was pretty upset about that. So if I ever have to do that again, I will buy the product from my veterinarian, which I know is made in the US, it's guaranteed. And if there are any side effects, they will follow up with me. So that's one thing that I had previously recommended, buying this stuff online, as long as it's a name brand. But I no longer recommend that because after that experience, I'm just lucky that the reaction wasn't worse, that it was a topical skin reaction and that my cats didn't get sick or die. So cleaning is obviously number one to controlling parasites like fleas, which also cause some of the internal parasites. If you have wall-to-wall -wall carpets, get rid of them. <laughs> if you have a lot of pets in the house, I don't know how you do it. I had them here in my house and it was just a constant problem. Finally got rid of them, installed vinyl plank flooring and I have a whole new life. <laughs> and it was amazing how much dirt was under those carpets when I pulled them up. Despite the fact that I vacuumed what I thought was regularly, there was enough dirt under those carpets to plant potatoes. So if you have one cat and you're an immaculate housekeeper, good on you. But hard floors are so much easier to clean. But whatever you do, you got to vacuum frequently and you got to take the contents outside right away. Don't leave them in the bag. Flea eggs and larvae can get in there and hatch and continue their insidious cycle in your home. So obviously cleaning any kind of cloths, bedding, frequent, frequent washing, cleaning your cat's cat trees, Sorry about the wobbly screen, Grace came back. She's right here, <laughs> she's swatting at me. Now I hope I'm saying this word right, diatomaceous earth. <laughs> I know how to spell it, but I don't think I've ever said it out loud. Some of my friends have reported that they've had good luck with this product. It's not a product to be ingested or put on the pet, but it's something you can put in the yard, you can put on the floor. I think that company Flea Busters back in the day used to use this product where they just basically sprinkle it all over your house. And it is 
non-toxic, but it's, it has some kind of a drying agent. So if any insects come into contact with it, it basically sucks all the moisture out of their body and dries them up. So I read some reviews online. It's supposed to kill fleas, cockroaches, ants, all sorts of things. So I think keeping the house vacuumed, if you don't have carpets, can be a good solution. But for the backyard, especially if you have a big yard, if your dog or cats go out there, you could be getting fleas from, if, especially if you have deer or other critters around, they are loaded with parasites. So sprinkling this stuff in your yard can be a non-toxic way of keeping that population down. And of course, also gardening in your yard. We know that ticks like bushes and tall grass. So keeping the grass cut, keeping your yard clean and open can reduce the opportunities for critters like ticks to hang out and get on your pets and then onto you. I hope this information is interesting and helpful to you. Please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon for notifications. I'd love to hear about what type of content you would like to hear. I make videos on various aspects of pet care, horses, lost pet recovery, animal welfare. What would you like to hear about? What What's a topic that's of interest to you? I'd also like to hear about your experiences as an eco-friendly pet owner. What has worked well for you or perhaps what has not worked so well? Please comment below. Thank you for watching.